You're listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. Today is Thursday, April 11th. Former President Donald Trump has sparked criticisms from his current and former political rivals in the 2024 presidential election cycle after expressing his stance on abortion. Trump recently stated that he believes abortion laws should be determined by individual states. This comes after the 2022 overturning of the Roe v. Wade decision, which allowed several states to ban or restrict abortions. President Joe Biden responded by admonishing Trump's endorsement of statewide reproductive care bans. He warned that if Trump's administration were to propose a federal ban, Trump would approve it. Meanwhile, Teresa Bakovinak, a presidential candidate on a pro-life platform, criticized both Trump and Biden, labeling them, quote, baby killers. Ex-VP Mike Pence also condemned Trump's position, calling it a slight to pro-life Americans who previously voted for him. He stressed the need for a national minimum protection for the unborn in federal law. A recent survey by the Survey Center on American Life has raised concerns about the future of religion in the U.S., revealing that a higher percentage of Gen Z women have not only left organized religion, but also identify as religiously unaffiliated compared to Gen Z men. A majority of the respondents believe that most churches do not treat men and women equally, including 65% of women aged 18 to 29. Unsurprisingly, 39% of Gen Z women currently describe themselves as religiously unaffiliated. In addition to alleged gender inequality, factors like feminism, negative treatment of the LGBTQ plus community, and unrestricted access to abortions have been cited as possible reasons for the shift in beliefs. The survey warns that this trend is likely to disrupt churches, as women often contribute significantly to community-building efforts. Furthermore, by leaving religion, they also break the generational cycle of religious values. Megachurch pastor Josh Howerton of Lake Point Church in Texas has issued an apology for his careless words during a sermon that created a controversy online. In his original comment, he joked that women should obey their husband's wishes on their wedding night, triggering backlash for its connotations about marital consent. The sermon was shared by Shyla Gregory, a popular podcast host, and has since amassed over 1.7 million views. Howerton contends his joke was taken out of context, but acknowledged that even jokes can be careless words. In his apology, Howerton expressed remorse for his joke, even if unintended, potentially causing harm or discomfort. Gregory, meanwhile, commented that she felt the apology fell short, still complaining about the joke being taken out of context and not acknowledging the words as wrong. A recent 15-year study conducted by the University of Groningen in the Netherlands observed that gender non-contentedness, defined as unhappiness with one's gender aligned with their sex, tends to decrease with age. Originally, 11% of the over 2,700 participants reported such feelings around age 11, which dropped to 4% by the age of 26. Besides, the study found this experience to be typically linked with lower global self-worth, behavioral, emotional problems, and non-heterosexual sexual orientation. Meanwhile, the World Professional Association for Transgender Health came under fire for leaked internal documents allegedly revealing that minors cannot provide informed consent for irreversible procedures such as puberty-blocking drugs and cross-sex hormones. The WPATH president, Marcy Bowers, defended the organization's science and evidence-based approach. Laguna Beach High School in California is currently investigating an incident where students reportedly shared inappropriate or nude photos generated by artificial intelligence, according to Principal Jason Alleman. This follows a similar incident last month in which five students from another Southern California school district were expelled for distributing AI-created nude images of their classmates. Alleman said, quote, These actions not only compromise individual dignity, but also undermine the positive and supportive environment we aim to foster at our school. The school is working closely with Laguna Beach Police Department in its investigation. This incident raises questions about the legal implications as current California laws on child pornography and the sharing of nude photos without consent do not cover AI-generated images. Librarians across the U.S. report increasing incidents of drug abuse, lewd behavior, and violence among patrons, a situation made worse by the pandemic. Locations like Contra Costa County Library in California had to temporarily shut down due to confrontations and public sexual acts. The severity is illustrated by the San Diego Central Library's nearly 1,800 calls to police over five years for issues like drug overdoses and thefts. This problem extends to other states like Oregon, where police recently arrested 20 people near the Central Library in Poland. The American Library Association has called for community leaders to safeguard their local libraries, describing the escalating aggression as an existential threat to the cornerstone of our democracy. 
Renowned atheist Richard Dawkins has recently shown a softer stance towards Christianity, describing himself as a, quote, cultural Christian in an interview during the Easter period. Dawkins, typically known for his sharp criticism of religion and works like The God Delusion, expressed appreciation for hymns and Christmas carols and a sense of comfort within the Christian ethos. However, although he seems content with enjoying the cultural aspects of the faith, he does not believe in its religious teachings. As he mourns the decline of cultural Christianity in the UK, some have suggested that this could be seen as an endorsement of secular humanism over any particular religious belief. Despite this shift, Dawkins has made no moves to partake in the religious practices of Christianity, signaling that his warm feelings are solely towards the cultural elements of the religion. Master portrait artist Zimu Tan unveiled his solo exhibition, The Lord Was There, at New York's Arkell Museum on March 1st. Originally planning to showcase a portrait of 15 pieces, Tan, moved by his Christian faith, revised his display to display 10 deeply religious pieces instead. Originally planning to showcase a portfolio of 15 pieces, Tan, moved by his Christian faith, revised his plan to display 10 deeply religious pieces instead. Works such as Valley of Dry Bones, The Lion, the Lamb, and the King, and Temptations are deeply inspired by biblical narratives. Ten years ago, the artist raised with Buddhist influences converted to Christianity, redirecting his philosophical exploration of life through art. Tan and his wife plan to convert a historic building in Wingdale into an art hub, which will feature a gallery for Christian artists. You can see the artwork from Zimu Tan and learn more about all the articles you heard today by clicking the link in the podcast show notes below. Thank you for listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. We encourage you to follow the show in your podcast player of choice, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or third-party podcast players like Overcast and Pocket Casts. You can also download the Edify app for free and listen to all the podcasts on the Edify network by clicking the link in today's podcast show notes. We would also appreciate a five-star rating in Apple Podcasts and Spotify to help us reach a wider audience with the Christian Post Daily Podcast. You can also subscribe to our daily newsletter and get the top headlines delivered to your inbox by clicking that link in the show notes as well. Thank you again for listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast.